Okay, I'm going to call the meeting to order of the Sunnyvale 4A Development Corporation Board of Directors regular meeting Wednesday, July the 10th at 5.07 p.m. We do have a quorum. Um, all members are present except for Member Cash. I'm going to go ahead and move into the public forum and not seeing anybody that wants to speak in the public forum, I'm going to open and close that and move on to discussion action items. Number one, discuss, consider, and act upon the regular meeting minutes from June 19th, 2019. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Okay. <clears throat> Second. I have a motion from Mr. Bokniak and a second from Mr. Porter to approve the meeting minutes from June 19th. All in favor, please raise your right hand. Passes unanimously. We'll move on to item number two. Discuss and consider and act upon the June 2019 financial reporting and related items. Ms. Phyllis, welcome. Thank you. Good evening. Looking at the June 30th, 2019 financials, you're going to see that we have year-to-date revenues of 453,158 expenses of 202,711. Sales tax reported year-to-date is 385,460.57. Sales year-to-date total 54,766.77. We have year-to-date expenses of 202,711.83 with our monthly expenses, uh, including payroll, legal fees. We had a charge from Axios for setting up the, the purchase of and setting up the uh, computer equipment needed for the new administrative assistant for the EDC. We had some expenses related to the uh, Economic Development 101 training and 4A paid this month one half the registration cost for the Economic Development Leadership Program for the EDC director. So monthly date expenses were $11,782.76. As of June the 30th, 2019, we have a net revenue of $250,404, bringing your total fund balance to $2,580,856, of which you have assigned $93,750 for hope development. I do. Um, <clears throat> that monthly revenue, 100, 107. Right. That, that is this the first month of the the full? That month? is part of the reason for the uh, for you seeing a, a monthly revenue of, I believe it was 105 thousand dollars in the um, sales tax uh, category, and that is because this is the first month since the expiration of the uh, road maintenance tax. This is the first month that you will actually see your full half cent on the uh, sales tax receipts. So that for the month was $60,443.15. And then because of the expiration of the uh, road maintenance, there is a difference in the accrual. So we had to reverse the original two months worth of accrual based on your quarter cent and then adjust it based on the new half cent. Okay, so. So that's the reason for your increase. 60,443.15 was the actual sales tax receipts, and there was a difference of $45,000 in the accrual. Okay. So, going forward, it's the full half percent we're getting now. It's going to double. Full half cent, right. <clears throat> and. I guess we'd better spend some money quick, huh? We'd be looking at <laughs> Just you know, six to 700 a year instead of three to 350 in, in revenue because of that. So. And the, um, <clears throat> when it comes to the unassigned fund balance, we're showing 2.487, and that's got what's left on hope. That's correct. But it doesn't have some of the others in there, you know. I the guess others that you've committed to, no, those are, are, we're keeping those on a separate, separate ledger to keep you. from having to assign funds for them, and they would be coming once those you know, you received, a, uh, or we received a present. So the, so the 250 for the road repairs, is, is that now on the spreadsheet? 
Net the two hundred fifty thousand dollars for your road repair. No, that well, that's not part of your incentives. No. But we've approved. Okay, so right, we, we just approved that as a budget item. That that would probably come out of your line item six nine one nine four two two capital improvements. Okay, when it when that hits. when that comes to pass. <coughs> And the other projects, I'm just trying to figure out how much of that 2.5 is actually uncommitted. Roughly, if, I mean, if you look at $250,000 for that Aston, I believe it was Aston Road, right. Aston Road, uh, you have close to probably $100,000, not quite $100,000 in incentives that you have committed to that are not assigned. And then you have your... Uh, Ninety-three thousand dollars. That is roughly. I'm going to say you're looking at close to between seven hundred and fifty to maybe eight hundred. Because part of that is also your bond payments. That's uh, the remaining bond payments. That's right. Okay. So roughly, that's where we're getting to the maybe the one seven one eight number that was being kind that's of kicked around the other night. And of course, keep in mind that you know this number is is where you sit as of June the thirtieth. 2019 you still have you know July August and September that have not yet hit so you have some additional revenue that will be coming in during those three months as well as some additional expenses <clears throat> the difference between an assigned amount and a spreadsheet amount is that the assigned amounts the process has begun that they the well, initial funding has happened or what what no, differentiates what's the, assigned and what's being kept off books on, on really the really the, the assigned is 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 to show that you've committed to that amount of money and that you can't you know when you're looking at your fund balance you know that hey if i have a two million dollar fund balance but i have assigned two hundred thousand dollars and really i only have a fund balance of a million eight so it's really a, an, an opportunity for you to see you know when you're looking at your fund balance what you have that you have already committed to the reason why we uh, decided to increase the incentive budget at mid-year and to start keeping track of that on a separate ledger is just so that year to year you have a better idea of what you need to budget for incentives what you've committed to that maybe this year if say you've committed to two hundred thousand dollars this year in incentives that are not assigned then going into next year's budget, then you know that you have to budget at least two hundred thousand dollars for that. And honestly, it's it's an accounting nightmare to assign funds and then to go back and to you know it just creates additional uh, accounting work. And it seems like at the end of each year, when we do go through the audit process, uh, the auditors usually have you know, questions with those assigned funds. I thought it would be an easier way too for the boards to see exactly what. You know, and last, last, at last month's meeting, I don't know if you remember what we uh, sent, gave everybody a copy of that spreadsheet to show you exactly where you were on your incentives, so the ones that are not assigned so that you can see how much you've committed to and what. If it's, if it's possible, if we could just make that sheet just a part of the monthly sure. package, if that's okay, if it's Absolutely. not much of a trouble. I even have a hard time. Okay. <laughs> so, so if it's assigned and then we don't spend it at the end of the year, then it's kind of like an auditing thing. Well, if it's assigned and you don't spend it at the end of the year, before the end of the year, it stays assigned right. and it's just going to roll into the next fiscal year. But that's what gets questioned when you say it, Yes. So that's yes. So it's a sign because we feel like it's going to be funded right. this year, during this, this budget year. That's correct. The, and that's the reason off, why we left it that way. The spreadsheet mm -hmm. we feel like will be funded in the following budget. Well, it, you, you could have some that are funded this year, but you know, with only a few <coughs> months left, I don't know that 100% of them will be funded. Well, instead of putting this assigned line on this statement here, mm -hmm. that was that's all being pulled off going forward or it was <clears throat> so for example we've got the 250 for Aston Road will some of that expense come out this year it's possible I'm thinking and the balance will come out next year but the whole 250 is showing as committed because it was approved by council is my understanding and we approved it yeah. 
So, and the, the, the other incentives that we've approved, and whether they occur in this fiscal year or next, it could be both. And we can bring to you next month um, for you know for the board to see a list of, of what we show to be what you have currently committed to, so that you know maybe it gives yeah certainly it would be a much clearer there. picture of what we have to mm -hmm. to invest. Yeah. So I can tell you right now with the incentives, we're committed to about a hundred thousand um, dollars, and then South Aston the two hundred fifty thousand, and then the bond payment. But that hundred doesn't include the balance of. Hope, correct? It does not. So but, almost two hundred. But to get to the two five, it's already taken out to get to the two four eight seven. Yes. So right. if we take yeah, starting with the two four eight seven take out what you have. Correct. Yeah. Well, gotcha. Okay. I'm, motion. I'm a, oh. I'll make a motion <laughs> to approve the treasure. Approve the June financials. <laughs> <laughs> as presented. Second. I have a motion for Mr. Bokniak and a second for Mr. Cora to approve the June 2019 financials. All in favor, please raise your right hand. Passage unanimously. <clears throat> we'll move on to item number three. Discuss, consider, and act upon the recommended 2019-20 budget. Okay, this is for the uh, fiscal year 2019-2020, and we did review this at the last meeting, went over each one of these line items. Uh, uh, we went through and we highlighted for you so that you could see there in red uh, the changes that were being made to, to each of these line items. There has been, since our last meeting, one additional change, uh, and that is the addition of a car allowance on line item 691-6009. And that's for a total uh, annual cost of $6,000 that's currently being split 50-50 with 24A and 4B. So on your budget for your 2019-20, you're going to see that for $3,000. That's the only change we made uh, from last month's meeting. So again, we're looking at proposed for 1920, $932,760 in total revenues and total expenses of $1,223,000 council meeting for the council's review. That's what I was going to ask you if it had been approved yet. So we need to approve it and then it'll go. <clears throat> so does any questions with respect to the budget? So if I'm looking on that next page with the detail on it mm -hmm. and I'm looking I'm just looking for that uh, operating expenditures of 258. Uh, it's going to be some of those line items that it, it, it's it's if you look at the detail on the next page, it's picking up some of those categories and grouping them together. So it's picking up everything from looks like the hundred, the uh, hundred thousand and up. Yes. So that's going to include your wages and your salaries, administrative services, promotional services, office supplies, your dues, subscriptions, and memberships, legal fees, those types of items. Right. Your incentives is there at $500,000. The transfer out is listed separately at the $15,000. And then your $450,000 is going to be your uh, capital improvements and infrastructures. So your $100,000 listed for town beautification is also going to be included uh, in that $258,000. And like you said, from the hundred thousand, I think we talked. I think we talked a little bit. I might be confusing four A with four B here, so if I am, uh, talked a little bit about the uh, categories and the way that you know they're they're set, unfortunately, by ENCODE. And to if I could go back and change just for four A and four B, I would. However. Once you make a change to one category, it makes a change to all the funds, so it goes back and you know affects. So it's easier to me, or, or a little bit simpler, I think, to look at the detail page and you know to follow that than it is to go back and look at the grouping of the you know the line items. We did talk about that, so you're right. Okay. <laughs> I'm good with that. I mean, I think 
it, we've got 450 for capital improvements and in infrastructure. We know the bulk of the 250 road is probably going to hit that. Yeah. yeah, I don't know how much Tracy you think is going to hit this year, but we're working on price quotes right now. So as soon as we get those, we can pick one and start moving forward. Okay, <clears throat> so that's either going to slide into this current year or hit next year, and you know, our and we've kind of said this that our our. Our numbers for next year, the five for the incentives, the 450 for the infrastructure, kind of hard to peg. You know, we're just kind of ballparking based on some estimated deals. So, I mean, if those numbers have been you know, basically blessed and we're good with, I'm, you know, I'm good with leaving them where they are. We can't fill the details in yet, obviously. We don't, we have no idea how much is going to slide <laughs> there, but. Well, and if you'll remember too, with the incentives, that was approved in the mid-year budget by council. So and that's, that's why I don't want. To, yeah, I don't want to. And then the infrastructure improvements. Excuse me. Um, we talked about that some that with the town not getting the road money, that we may do some additional road projects or infrastructure, and that's why we made that four fifty. I think is yeah. what we talked about. So, I would approve the proposed budget as stated. That there are any objections. I think so, so I'll let you make oh, a motion to veto. Yeah, it is. Oh, it it is an act. Yeah. Yeah. I'll make a motion to approve the amended budget. Nin as presented. 1920? For 1920. Okay. Second. Okay, I have a motion from Mr. Bokniak and a second from Mr. Weeks to approve the 2019-20 budget as amended. All in favor, please raise your right hand. This is unanimous. That, is that it for Phyllis? No, she's going to stay unless you have any questions. Okay. No, I was just going to say okay. thank you, but you can stay. <laughs> I always like to thank you for coming. I appreciate okay. that. We'll move on to item number four. Discuss, consider, and act upon, re and act upon update regarding town council recommendation to staff on future actions related to sales tax utilization. So this was put on the agenda just to update on what happened with town council and Paul, feel free to jump in at any time or Susan jump in. Um, just to be able to be allow 4A to have a discussion on the possibilities of the dissolution of 4A. So Monday night and conversations about where, um, where the town sits for being able to pay for some things that are really needed for the town. The thought is that maybe taking the 4A and dissolving it to use, be able to utilize some of those funds to be able to do what the town needs that we're incapable of being able to do right now, create a fire state, fire maintenance police station, um, street maintenance, and being able to do those roads without restrictions that we have. I mean, we have the restrictions of not being able to do residential or certain potholes in certain areas, and the town desperately needs to be able to do those things. So town council decided on Monday night to direct staff to um, put together some wording for a ballot um, for an election to go before the voters in November to possibly dissolve the 4A. Um, and so I don't know if I don't want to say too much or what what we need to say. Hi, Susan. Hi. Susan Guthrie, town manager. Oh, is this doesn't work? <laughs> is that one? Oh, by yes. the way, I want to throw money at that from 4A <laughs> to fix that. So, <laughs> Miss, <laughs> Madam President, get, <laughs> get that sucker it, working. It's approved. We're just trying to get it done. <laughs> so, that was why we did the budget amendment. <laughs> Susan Guthrie, town manager. So just, um, uh, Tracy got it all right. Um, I just want to share that we had presented many options to the council, um, you know, kind of recreating what had been in the past in terms of the street maintenance only piece. We also talked about a crime, cr crime prevention, cr crime control prevention district, CCPD. We talked about um, doing as what ultimately the council voted, which was to present an election that would um, uh, terminate the 4A, and that would create those funds would then go into general fund, and I think the discussion of the council was to utilize them for police and street maintenance. So very similar to what had already been happening, 
but then for future police and one of the, the, the main thing that Tracy didn't mention that I just want to make sure as part of the conversation is it's one of the steps that we were looking at to make sure we're positioned well for next fiscal year because if we do this election in November it takes several months to get everything in place so that it actually happens so we probably won't start collecting any funds until June in the general fund um, and what kind of the important thing that's going to happen is beginning next fiscal year the legislature passed a measure that will limit the amount that a town can grow or a city can grow their revenues and from the general fund by 3.5 percent and our preliminary rolls this year showed us growing by 16 percent and you know they're adjusting right now so it's kind of a moving target but that gap between the 16% of growth and the 3.5% that we're gonna be allowed next year, you know, it's not that, oh, that's just less money, that we still have to provide all those services to all the new people that are moving in. And so it's a real, you know, a real issue. And, you know, we understand why the legislature did what they did. But for a fast growing town like we are, it's a real um, hit and a very big blow. Um, so we're looking at many things that we can do to prepare so that come next fiscal year, we are prepared to provide service and continue our service levels. And this was one of many things. And because we were gonna have to do something anyway for street maintenance, we started looking at the other, um, the other things. One of the things that was discussed was trying to blend the boards because um, you know really 4B can do much of what 4A can do and um, but you know they have had really different perspectives over the years so there's at least one member that is turning out on 4B and and then there's some other positions that um, are opening we don't know if people are coming back or not so there is an opportunity to try to blend the boards and the council hasn't taken that discussion up because that will happen you know, a little bit later, but they wanted to make you aware of that there is some dialogue going on because one of the biggest concerns um, that I've heard council express is you know, the brain trust of 4A and you know, what you all bring to the community and not wanting to lose that intellectual capital Another thing that was discussed in the meeting was um, your fund balance. And right now it stood around um, after all your obligations would be met, it's about $1.8 million. So there's a lot of discussion about uh, under law that would roll into the general fund, but the council has um, talked a lot about a desire to um, kind of earmark that for economic development. So it, it wouldn't go away. We still have that money there available for economic development. Um, and then in the last meeting, a couple of the council members talked about forming some kind of advisory group to advise them on use of those funds, you know, over a period of time. So again, I just wanted to tell you, you know, that they really value um, this group of people and what you you know bring to the organization and the community and. Um, that they're looking at ways to continue those, you know, that advice and guidance, but just in a different model. That, and the other piece, the other thing, and most of you heard this during the training, that less than 10% of cities have both 4A and 4B. And my guess is all cities are going to be facing this 3.5 thing. So those who do have two probably are having the discussion we're having because we're going to have to look for ways to um, kind of stabilize the funding stream. So anyway, I'm happy to answer any questions. I think the blended board is a good idea. Um, <clears throat> just because 4B hasn't been doing economic development as long as 4A, they've been really concentrated on parks. Um, and so I think some of the insight from some of these board members would be good. So. Well, I'll just say <clears throat> I was at the meeting Monday and was at, invited to speak. Um, just because I was an early 4A member here, and I didn't have it, that didn't come prepared to speak or anything. But so speaking for myself, my comments were, 
I could ver see very strongly it made the most sense to me as a town's person, town person, resident, resident. that with this cap coming and with this fire to, or uh, police department and everything else coming, there's a lot of uncertainty, but we know one thing, there's gonna be a limit on funds coming in. And while I was thinking about this, even going into the meeting of making the case why you know having 4 a doing what they're doing makes sense, it didn't make sense to me. Mm -hmm. And Susan had done an analysis that I wanna say four to $500,000 worth of cap funds could go away from the town based on the the new law state law and that's roughly what we're taking what what we're taking in for our quarter piece and we were already given the the, the quarter piece for the roads and so i had a hard time saying that we would incentivize certain businesses when our town people are having to step up to the plate or or come up with some way to have to pay for services that aren't going to be there i mean it it's a tough thing. And so my thinking was dissolve it, roll it in. And even uh, Jim Wade was saying that, um, and, and, and I think the dust needs to settle until this change rolls through to see what kind of revenues we're actually looking at, what our budgets, there's so many uncertainties I think right now when it comes to police department expenditures and capital costs and road costs. And just, there, there's so much up in the air that let the dust settle for a year or two and then you know jim was mentioning and i hadn't even thought about this frankly was you know 4b could technically pick up another quarter point for example down the road instead of their half they could go another quarter now whether the council would approve taking money out of general and moving it there is another matter but but it is a possibility if 4b is taking on all were all parks and all economic a lot of economic development the council still has the opportunity to do things themselves too but putting the whole case together but i but i did want to say as susan was saying they were very complimentary to this board and they they wanted to be able to use the folks that are here you know to to be able to help out going forward so i mean i I've, I've personally really appreciated the communication with the new board and or to, to council, I should say, and I think the interaction and, and the, the asking for our opinions on things has been tremendous. I mean, I, I've just been very impressed. So, uh, so that I just wanted to outline, and I and I said it was, that was my opinion. I was not speaking for the board. So, well, I appreciate you being here, and I had planned on being here, and something came up. So. I hope Thank I, didn't, you. I, don't, I didn't know what you would have said. So. <laughs> well, and, and the one thing I do want to add is, you know, the reason why the discussion is about 4A and not about 4B is because 4B has the flexibility. And I think that's going to be the name of the game. And that was kind of the discussion we had with council is because there are so many unknowns right now, we need to remain as fluid as possible so that we can be poised and ready. And you know, a lot of towns already I'm hearing are kind of back on their heels trying to figure out what they're going to do. And we have an ability to have a path forward. And I mean, we're very blessed to be in that position because a lot of yeah. organizations aren't. That's and true. Terry, you probably work with a lot yeah. of them. Mm -hmm. And so we're very blessed to have that. But I wanted to make sure everybody realized that that's why the discussions about 4B is because they could go either way or 4A can't. Right. I did have two questions that kind of came out of after that meeting I was thinking about, and I think Tracy may have clarified one of them, but so that the mechanics of this would be the election in November, and if that, if the election passes where the residents approve folding it in, which I would think they would, 4B is dissolved right at that point. 4A. 4A. I mean 4A, I'm sorry, 4A. <laughs> Would we continue so to board, need the board's until, gone. Yeah. The board's gone at that point then? That's a good yeah, I, I We honestly have not delved into the legalities of what, I think there's some things that need to happen administratively with the board and council, some actions that they would have to take. So, I mean, my, I, my thought is based upon some conversations we've had with lawyers is it wouldn't happen immediately that there's some actions that would take place, but I think it's pretty quick following that. But, we can get a better legal opinion on that if you'd like. 
Well, I would just like, like to what know the what, the, would be. what the future of the board is <clears throat> and yeah. when the cutoff would so end. It would probably still be several months just because in the instance we have to ensure that we've paid off our yeah. debts and our obligations and seeing how all that's taken care of because until all of that is met, it can't be dissolved. Right. So we've mm -hmm. got, there will be things well, there, that we'll need to take. But there would be a fund balance still sitting there. Yes. My, I guess my question <laughs> is, is the election negate the need of the board at, right at the election? And that's, I, well, I have that question down because I remember you asking that. So I have not had an opportunity to ask our and attorney okay. yet, but yes. If my other question was. But before you, oh, just because this kind of piggybacks on that. So I roll off on October 1st. Also, I guess we wouldn't know because the election. I just didn't know so, if you'd replace me with someone that's going to be only on the board for a short amount of time. So that's just because we don't know anybody who is up for a reappointment. Just will stay on the board until such further notice that it gets dissolved or we reappoint members. But would you replace me or would I stay on? No, it? you would just continue oh, okay. to stay on. Because right. I would hate to get someone involved and it would just be a short period of time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I think it makes sense that. You know, until still such time that we know what the outcome of the election would be. Right. And and you know, the other thing was one of the concerns that we were kind of having was, wait, what if they you know vote to get rid of it but not to add the new piece? You know, and so we actually had some um, feedback from the comptroller that we would roll that into one item, so it could one couldn't go without the other. And that was one of the concerns about doing the crime control prevention district is we think it had to be a separate entity, like if we were to break it off. And so this way we can roll it into one measure so you couldn't have the dissolution without the movement of the money to the general fund because you could risk the money having to go back to the state. So, mm -hmm. or actually it's not back to the state, it just goes away. So. The other question was on the million eight. <clears throat> there were some I think further discussion about those costs that are coming up that are either going to be bonded costs or not. And I guess my question is, how much of the million eight, you know, will will some of that money really get used for you know police department needs or? Yeah. And I and I'm not saying that's wrong either way. I'm just saying what is the likelihood of the million eight remainder or whatever's left in our fund? you know, going too strictly in sentence. Ultimately, um, it's going to be the council's decision. And all I can tell you is the discussions I've heard to date are, is a very strong sentiment to hold that for economic development, but they'll have to vote on that and, and make that so. But that's what I'm hearing up to this point and everything we heard in that meeting, I think was consistent with that. But um, that's what I believe will happen, and that's what they've discussed. So. Yeah, and I, and you know, we talked a little bit about it at the last meeting. So when you came in and visited with us, and I think the board's real receptive to that because we're all residents here and we know what the town needs to do. Yeah. <laughs> so. yeah okay. Thank you all. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Thank you, Phyllis. Thank you, Phyllis. <laughs> okay, so we'll move on to item number five. Discuss future agenda items and events. So a couple of items that I know about, obviously we'll keep this one, item number four. It's just kind of a reoccurring item so we can discuss things as we need to. Um, I'm going to bring back all of our there's four agreements, um, or three for sure, co-create, Hope Coffee, and Saucer Development. We just need to move the time frame of when their certificate of occupancy is back so that they could fall within that category. So we're gonna just move it back to the end of the year. They're looking at opening probably around October. Right now it says the end of August. So we just need to get those reapproved with a new certificate of occupancy date. To um, to discuss the like the glacier project and other things, do they have to be on the agenda? They do. Okay. Uh, we have the glacier preliminary master plan on July 22nd at 6 p.m. If you're able to attend that and want to see and provide input on that as well. Um, That's at council. It is, yes. And that'll be distributed in advance of that meeting, at least what the plan is. 
I should get it here pretty soon. That's why I'm I, until I get it in hand, but they're supposed to be getting that to me pretty soon. Is there anything else you all can think of for a future agenda items? When, I guess, well, okay. when would we discuss with the board members, if, you know, if this passes and if we're still on the board for a few months after that, but once the board is dissolved, who would like to be part of that new board? Because we talked about blending the boards. So you could open that back up to item number four. I just didn't know if you want, you probably would, would like input from the members on who might be interested in. Right. I plan on contacting everybody okay. and kind of talk about it and okay. see what everybody's thoughts were. Okay. That's good. My only question was, um, obviously, if we've got a fuse now that you know we or a timetable we might be looking at was, it makes you rethink, you know, projects and things like that. But the the town center project or the town town development project. Is that something that will be back on a, on an agenda anytime the town, soon? Town, downtown as Vision as, Committee. Yeah, as far as kind of where, what direction that's going, or any updates to that, or. So the quick update on that is just we have met with a property owner that has put together a preliminary plan for their property um, that is within the town center district and kind of reviewing that, going over um, their plans, working with the downtown committee and trying to figure out that as a whole. Um, there are, will be a lot of you know, questions that if this does happen, we're, you know, we're gonna have to reevaluate goals and what one board wants to look at versus the two boards. So we'll see. Well, we met on July 3rd, it was a good meeting. So is that something that could be a future agenda item? It's yeah. just an update on update. the downtown vision committee. I would love to hear kind of what's going on. I think that and an update on Glacier too, because I just think that's, I don't know, do y'all want to be updated on Rails to Trails? I mean, she's kind of anyway updating us. So. Well, Glacier potentially impacts us if there's some sort of private Question involvement thing. in that center or that project, so that could have some some bearing on us. I would think. What about discussions that we had on signage? Do we want to move forward to consider doing that, or where are we at on that? Are we still trying to get pricing, and you know, we talked. Lyle, about Lyle's had a lot of major projects that have come up that he's had to look at, but he's supposed to be looking at the different sites that we've talked about and seeing what he thinks structurally those look like. So so that's something we could possibly still do before we dissolve. Knowing, knowing there's a sunset, <laughs> it's probably December, okay, and or a few months after. How aggressive are we going? And how aggressive we, are we going to be allowed to be? That's a good I point. mean, is the bingo? Well, I, I think that's what everybody's wanted to right. ask up to this point. Right. I, I mean, is I think we need to know what the true intention is. If the true intention is to bundle this million eight, either for general operating or is seed money for the combine 4A and 4B boards, don't we need to be in the loop as, as to I think how the powers that be are viewing that? Because that's what it comes down to is, is the million eight that we still have available for incentives, loans, and everything else that we do. Is that a target of the town? Or is it something that is wanting to be shifted to the combined, or to let's just call it 4B for, yeah. you know, ha however, for whatever shape it takes after this? How aggressive are we going to be? And if we are aggressive, does it get approved 
Well, Susan's kind of elated that she thought most of them were wanting to keep that in economic development, that 1.8, but that Yeah, but she decided. also said that, you know, it would go a long way in solving the reduced revenue problem that the town's going to face, if not this year, the following year. So Terry, she said two things. She said two very different things maybe during her presentation. Maybe come back to five and go back to four. Okay, sorry. Okay, we're going to go ahead and, and move back to item four, um, and, then, and then we can close out on five since uh, we're discussing um, the recommendation on s s uh, staff on future actions related to sales tax. And Mr. Weeks, that's a great question. I've had that question myself, um, and one that I need to have further discussions on before I can give an answer to that because I don't know the honest okay. answer to that. Okay. And I would. I mean, I know this is all fresh and new, but. You know, I, I think we kind of need a little guidance as, you know, are we just going to herd the flock in for the rest of the year? Or are we going to actively try to generate new opportunities for 4A until we do before we are eliminated? Well, I would, I, I would just add two things is that the, the million eight is the number right now. Mm-hmm. The quarter cent that we'll, we'll be getting from now to the end, of, just the end of the year, is six months at thirty-five grand a year. That's two hundred grand. So that'll be two million dollars. Two two million dollars, and then we got another two hundred thousand that was going to the town for road repairs. That now will be coming into four A. Has to come back. And so the question I would have for council and and town managers would be. Are, well, are you going to earmark that 200 like for, from the road quarter percent that we're going to collect from now to the end of the year that's actually going into our fund? If you're earmarking that specifically for road repairs to take that back out once that fund does transfer over. In other words, your, your point is well taken. That's why I was asking the question to Susan, frankly, but um, getting a handle on what what availability funds we're going to have and do we need to be earmarking a quarter cent that we collect from now until this sucker wraps up and and it was it was used for road maintenance there are no road maintenance funds for us for the town now that we were covering and so we just need some guidance i would think on, on that uh, that's i don't think we very good. earmark it per se because it's not something that we're supposed to earmark for, but knowing that, I mean, we're not going to spend two million dollars. So I mean, that funds, that funds going to be there whenever they need it, and then it'll be up to them to decide how they want to allocate that. But I get what you're saying, and you know, we have, and I think we talked about this at the last meeting a little bit that if you know if we get an extra four hundred fifty thousand dollars, then putting it in some line item that we can help. And I think that that's when we kind of said, well, what about the infrastructure? Because we can't help with some infrastructure with, you know, our limitations with what we can help with. And we're just doing part of Ashton Road. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they've always talked about Planners Road and T.C. Lupton's not in good shape, but. We talked about the road to uh, Vineyard Park last night. Yes, and we're looking yes. at, um, yeah. we're looking at that one too. So there might be some more opportunity for some road projects. I mean, as a citizen of the town, I don't see that there really is any other alternative. Uh, I mean, yeah. I me and eight's not going to grow in the tree in the next two years. It needs to come from somewhere. And as much as we've tried, we never have been really successful using that money for grants or incentives it's there I mean why yeah I can't see you know, spending have, it to why, spend it why right? have <laughs> South Dallas roads when we have a million eight to spend on them I, I, don't, I don't see an alternative do you I like it but I don't see an alternative <laughs> James is quiet tonight. Yes, sure. Yeah. So, I mean, one of the things to think about is, and I'll, I'll explain later. be kind of having that conversation is, you no, 
know, if you got asked to go to 4B, would you want to go to 4B? Um, because if that's not a possibility, then that's, because I know some aren't particularly interested in the park side of it, so don't want to really be on 4B. So, I mean, if that is the case, then that kind of eliminates that saying, well, we need to put Franklin in 4B, just throwing your name out there. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Um, but, but, or, and another thing you need to look at is, you know, Terry terms out this yeah. year. I term out in two years. Okay, Paul and James Paul and ha have the have the long Lisa even K. Paul have the you know the longest term that they could possibly spend on that that boat. They want just a thought. Yeah, and I've you know. I have told Tracy and Susan that I would be <clears throat> willing to step down since I'm rolling off anyway, unless there wasn't enough members from 4A that wanted to move over. So, well, so would you start a new term if route. you went to 4B? Yeah. Oh, okay. Different board, yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Next. Never mind. <laughs> so, I, I mean, there's subcommittees and stuff that people can be on that can still be involved um, in those different aspects. So, I mean, we have we have those committees that could also, and upcoming committees that I'm sure are always being created. So there's always ways to be involved, but. So you're gonna have those conversations with the members? Yeah, I am. I mean, unless you know right now, but I, I mean, I know, I know at least one of you would like to think about it further. Because I already had, I don't wanna put anybody on the spot to think that you have to make a decision right now. Okay. Ready to move back to five? Okay. Discuss future agenda items and events. What's events? Just anything that if there was something coming up, chamber event or okay. Thank you. Uh, just a reminder, the Collins groundbreaking is on Tuesday at 9 a.m. out in front of Town Hall able to attend that. Um, August 1st right now is the tentative grand opening for QT that we're gearing up for. Um, earnings I still haven't gotten a firm date yet. Hmm. Looks like it's getting close. I mean a lot of the a lot of the trades have moved out. So looks good. Can't wait. Okay. All right. Then, and if you come up with something you'd like to see on a future agenda, just let Tracy know. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and recess into executive session pursuant to chapter 551, subchapter D of the Texas Governmental Code at 5.56 p.m. We don't need these, do we, iPads? I'm leaving. I'm leaving.